Welcome to a Yale iShare tutorial. Today we'll find the top five CPU consuming processes. Let's start by creating a new workflow. We'll get the process list, sort them per CPU consumption, and keep the top five. The list of activities and workflow control on the left side of the screen. To start, we'll drag and drop a process list activity from processes. We'll select the requested server. You can define additional server name or get the name or names of from a list, from an Excel, a database, and so on. Right now, we'll just choose from the list and we chose localhost. The activity return a list of processes currently running on the machine, including process ID, CPU usage, and memory usage. From the result set function, we'll use the sort table activity in order to sort the previous result set according to the CPU column. Notice that the previous activity output is actually the input for the next activity. It's used as the activity name within percent sign. In this case, process list one. We just sorted the, acti the, the process list based on CPU and the next is we'll use get rows activity in order to keep the only the top five rows from the sorted table. In order to send the result by email, we'll need to convert it into HTML. Use the convert to HTML activity for memory and function in order to do so. Notice that each activity has a small help button inside in case you need any help on the specific request values and parameters to correctly execute that activity. We'll send the result by email and place the previous activity result in the message body. Again, using the activity name within the, the relevant activity name within percent sign. The workflow can be executed by triggering an SNMP trap, a schedule task, email, or on-demand. In this case, we'll try and execute the on-demand by pressing the Run button. Check out the result view by viewing the Activity Log screen at the bottom of the Workflow Designer. Notice the, different, the differences between the results at each stage. First, there is the unsorted table, which includes all the processes. Second is the table being sorted according to the CPU column. Last stage, keep only the top five rows, which we have sorted previously based on CPU. So we get a result set that already contains the top five CPU consumers. And this is what will be sent in the email, of course, as we put this in the message body. Save and close the workflow. Enter the workflow name and description. And you have a workflow being ready to execute it either on demand or with the assistance of a work of a rule to be executed whenever there is the right email or SNMP trap to execute this. 
You could also use a scheduling mechanism in order to run this at a predefined interval. This concludes our top 5 CPU consuming processes tutorial. For further information, please visit our website.